Hello and welcome to what could be the most exotic whiskey I've ever tried. Now, for those of you who were tuning in hoping to see a glorious looking bottle of whiskey or the packaging that makes it just a special event, well, you might be a little bit disappointed, but don't leave because, well, this packaging in some ways is still very impressive. This little pouch here does have this whiskey we're gonna talk about in it and listed on the front of it. Uh, but these come from Whiskey Me. This is not a sponsored ad. I genuinely pay money every month to get little these little things delivered through my door with different whiskies in, which is, um, well, a fantastic experience, if I'm honest. But anyway, you can go look up Whiskey Me. I might, if I remember, put a kind of a affiliate link in the description below that means, well, if you sign up, I get an extra one, which would be fantastic. But genuinely, that's not what this is about. This is about this Rampour Whiskey. So despite me never actually having heard of the Rampour distillery, it is, well, apparently a pretty big force to be reckoned with in that part of the world, and that part of the world being India. Now, I don't really consider India a go-to when it comes to, well, whiskey purchases, but maybe we should. From what I could tell about them online, it's not just whiskey that they're pretty good at. The distillery as a whole, the parent company, the holdings company, whoever it is, doesn't just do, well, fantastic single malt. They also do, you know, rum, brandy, gin, and all sorts. So yeah, they know, they know what they're on with. But anyway, more about this one. With the Whiskey Me subscription and the little things that drop through your door every month, you get one of these nice little Nice little cards with some info on the back. And on this card, it says Ramper Double Cask. That is the uh, official name of this whiskey. It's 45% ABV. It is from, unsurprisingly, Rampur, India. Its age is, well, non-age stated or non-age signified, whichever the correct terminology is, but they're not going to tell us, so it's probably quite young. But the reason for the name double cask, as you probably imagined, is because it's been matured in two different casks, and those casks are ex-bourbon and sherry casks. It says under whiskey info, as the name suggests, Rampour double cask is matured in two types of wood, bourbon and sherry. Combine this with the high temperature fermentation that Rampour's environment offers, and in the glass you get a thrilling combination of tropical fruit, dried fruit and spice. This will be very interesting for that reason. Scotch, as most people will probably know, is made in Scotland, as most people will probably know, is quite a cold place. American whiskies, bourbons on the other hand, well, certainly quite a lot warmer than Scotland most of the time, but probably nowhere near as warm as Rampur, India. According to the tasting notes, it tastes like banana, ginger, and sultana. To be honest, I'm not a big banana fan, but in, well, in drinks, generally, that flavor comes across a bit differently from the real thing, and I'm quite happy with it. Um, and ginger and sultana, big thumbs up from me. Um, this goes great with a carrot cake, I guess, ginger and sultana, yes. Uh, a turkey curry, it is the time of year after all. And um, chestnuts roasting on an open fire and Jack Frost nipping at your toes. As you can probably tell, this was part of the festive December pack. So let's waste no time, let's crack it open. In the glass then, it's, um, I'd say it's kind of mid-tone. It looks a bit light in this, frame but actually I think that's the big light I've got for filming that's affecting it it's um actually got something is there something floating in there maybe it's just a reflection of my light itself but um no there's nothing in there but yeah color wise it's uh pretty much spot on in the middle you can see a Terrifying upside down interpretation of my face there. Um, but yeah, nice, golden, deep straw coloured, I guess. Right then, aromas. Sweet, boozy, this is 45% after all. I can see the Sultana coming through really strongly. It's, it's almost got something of a dessert wine character to it, that kind of dried raisin Sultana thing. And The ginger and banana, not ever so apparent on the nose, but there is definitely layers and levels of sweetness to this, and it's, well, I've got no doubt, it's also gonna pack a fiery punch. So, let's give it a go. 
cheers. Or whatever they say in India. I should have looked it up, but cheers. Interesting. Very, very interesting. I'm trying to immediately fit it, match it to something else, something more known, something more likely that you've experienced. And I guess the bourbon and, and sherry cask, well, that does bring it in line with other whiskies that are matured in those barrels. But which ones? Well, I have to say, it's more like Speyside whiskey than anything else. It's definitely Scotch Speyside. It's not particularly American influenced other than the kind of residual vanilla notes from that bourbon barrel. It's got really mellow sweetness up front and a big, sharp, fiery kick at the back. That's an incredibly, wow, a very well balanced whiskey indeed. Now then, as I do with all my drinks, I'm going to spit a little bit of water into this just to open the flavours a little. It's not scientific. The water, amount of water changes every time I do this, but it doesn't matter really. So, now it's been opened for a moment. The aroma, to be honest, is starting to disperse. It's becoming a bit more uniform, I guess, is probably the right descriptor. It's quite boozy on the nose. The sweetness is maybe waning a touch. But there's some spice in there that wasn't overly evident before, which would... I would guess, is the ginger, and with the water added, that does change it up quite a bit. It's uh, super warming still. Again, the intensity of the sweetness has waned. Adding water to this, in a weird way, almost makes it less palatable, which is well, not the norm, if we're honest. It's uh, Maybe I'm being unfair. I think what's happened is adding the bit of water to it has, well, has diluted the whiskey, but maybe it's it's kind of diluted the sweeter and more subtle notes than it has that fiery heat at the back, which means, well, now I'm only really getting a lot of that fiery heat. But I have to say, I'm not complaining. That, that is very nice indeed. Right then, a quick bit of information about the distillery on the back here. It says, uh, Rampo Single Malt was only launched in 2019, but the Rampo distillery dates back to 1943. That makes it the oldest copper pot distillery in India. Its position in northern India, in close proximity to the Himalayas, means that the temperature ranges from 0 degrees in the winter to 50 degrees in the summer. And this gives whiskey made here a unique production and maturation profile. So a kind of, when we were talking before about how the heat was gonna affect this and be very different to anything else, I was quite surprised maybe how similar it was to a good space side on flavor. But actually now that makes a bit more sense. Yes, the heat is taking it to a completely different level than Scotland, but that naught C low is well, very, very similar. So maybe not too much of a surprise. Um, in terms of price point, I had a look earlier on the Whiskey Me site because they do generally sell bottles of everything they do kind of examples of. Um, and it was around the 50 to 60 pounds mark, I believe, um, which I think is fair, to be honest. It's, um, yeah, it's very nice. I've got no complaints. It's uh, reasonably easy to get on with. It's not smoky at all. It's sweet, quite light, but just with a massive bit of fire right at the back. I think those who are maybe not familiar with tasting whiskies, beers, anything really, you know, kind of familiar with picking out individual notes, would assume that that kick at the back end is pure alcohol. Well, maybe it is, but it has nuances to it. It's, while I'm not picking up the ginger flavor specifically, the way that heat interprets itself is not sheer burn like you would just get with alcohol burn. It has more of a considered culinary heat like ginger. And that, 
is all I have to say about it. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it if you haven't already subscribed, if you will be so kind, and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.